Hey folks, I'm going to share a few slides with you on systematic hedging, or as I call it, how to hedge like a boss. So you're a coffee roaster. You have a roasting facility, you buy coffee from all over the world, you roast it according to your special roasting profile, and you sell it. You sell it both by the bag in grocery stores, and also in your swanky, super cool cafes. Your core business is roasting coffee. It's no surprise that you're really good at it. You know the origins, you know your customers, you know the perfect roasting profile and blending technique. You make sure the farmer gets paid a fair price for their coffee, and you give yourself a fair margin so you can make a profit, pay your salaries, and run your operating expenses. In short, you roast your coffee like a boss. But what happens when disaster strikes? There's a supply shock. There's a drought in Brazil. There's leaf rust in Colombia. El Nino rears its ugly head. I am El Nino. All other tropical storms must bow before El Nino. The price of coffee shoots from $1 per pound to $3 per pound in two months. Your customers expect a cup of coffee to cost the same amount every day, and you can't triple your prices over the same two month period. What do you do? Lucky for you, you don't have to do anything because not only do you roast coffee like a boss, you run your business like a boss. You've hedged your coffee purchases for the year and are largely unaffected by the rapid rise in coffee prices. Dozens of coffee roasters around the world fit this little story and it illustrates why hedging is so important, but not how it is done. It raises a lot of questions like, how does hedging protect you against a price rise? What if prices had plummeted instead of rising? How do you adjust your hedging strategy in each scenario? How do you hedge correctly? My name is Ryan Delaney and I advise coffee roasters on hedging strategy. Over the next five minutes, I'm gonna discuss how you can protect your company's business with a systematic hedging strategy. This is not financial advice for your specific situation, but is instead a generic, uh, general theoretical framework for systematic hedging. This framework can and should be customized for the specific needs of your business. Now, in case you were wondering what a uh, coffee price for ninja is, that's, that's it right there. So what is systematic hedging? When I say systematic, I mean using a consistent methodology. You don't hedge willy-nilly, you have a system. This is vital because without a consistent methodology, you cannot evaluate your effectiveness and you won't be able to measure what's working and what isn't. The point of hedging is to reduce your risk and specifically your price risk. So systematic hedging is a consistent strategy used to reduce your company's price risk. I'm gonna give you a baseline methodology that you can use to hedge your coffee systematically, but in order for that to make sense, we need to dive a little deeper into the mechanics of hedging. As a roaster, you're a natural seller of coffee. In other words, you have retail outlets or a website where every day coffee's going out and money is coming in. This is your core business. In order to keep this machine running, you need to purchase and roast coffee. Here's where the price risk comes in. You sell your coffee by the bag or by the cup in small quantities steadily over time, but you buy in large quantities maybe only a few times per year. This disconnect is timing is necessary, but it creates price risk. I mean, maybe as a boss, you want your barista to have every time a customer comes in, uh, call up the farmer and get a, a price quote from the farmer and then uh, add in the shipping costs and then see what's the, uh, the latest transportation costs and uh, call the marketing department and get the marketing and operating expenses, add all these in, work out your profit and then give that price to your customer. But obviously that doesn't work for a real retail operation. As a roaster, you need to buy several months supply of coffee uh, at a time and then deal with the price risk in between. So you do this by projecting out your anticipated expenses against your anticipated revenues. This way you can build in your operating costs and your profit, just like in our example. The problem is this, the price of coffee doesn't always comply with expectations. Coffee is a plant and therefore it's subject to the volatility of the weather cycles. It's also grown globally, so the coffee is affected by macro factors such as currency price fluctuations, unemployment rates, shipping costs, and supply chain disruptions. Here's a daily chart of Arabica futures for the last six months. In the first two months, Arabica gained 40%. The following two months, Arabica lost 40%. The next month, Arabica gained 30 cents again. Most of that was done over one six day period. And then two days later, the market had given back 50% of those gains. Let's contrast this with the average price of a cup of coffee in the US. And then the price of coffee futures over the same period. As you can see, there's a major disconnect in volatility. The point is this, 
If you want your business to be around for the long haul, you need to prepare for this volatility. We prepare for it by hedging. Systematic hedging uses a consistent methodology to smooth out your purchasing from just a few high stakes blocks into a smooth continuous purchase. This matches the curve of your selling and enables you to plan your pricing accordingly. All right, I promised you a systematic baseline methodology for hedging. Here it is. This methodology divides your hedges into three components in equal weights, but it's based on a very simple concept. The average price of the market is your baseline. It's the benchmark from which you gauge the success or the failure of any hedging program. With that in mind, here are the three pillars of the strategy. The true hedge, the conditional hedge, and upside protection. True hedging is basically taking an average price of the market. It's the simplest form of hedging and therefore it is the core of the systematic strategy. Now, I call it average pricing the market as shorthand, but really true hedging is about matching the speed of purchasing to the speed of selling. As a roaster, you're more or less selling continuously. So true hedging is continuous purchasing. The net effect of continuous purchasing in equal amounts is that you buy at the average price of the, that period. So if your operation sells 100 containers of coffee per year, that's roughly 108 lots of futures. To hedge this with a continuous hedge, you would buy nine lots of futures per month, 108 divided by 12 months. If you're using the rule of thirds, you would buy three lots per month using your true hedge and three lots each of the other two methods. Again, what you're doing with the true hedge is getting an average price of the market. You will never win big with this strategy and you'll never lose big either. And that's the point. It reduces your price risk. The true hedge is the baseline from which you should be judging the effectiveness of your hedging strategy. Any variation from this baseline is adding risk to your book. This strategy forms the first one third core of your hedge book. It intentionally dilutes the risk rewards of the other two strategies. Let's move on to the next two strategies, the conditional hedge and upside protection. If the true hedge is your neutral strategy, we could refer to these other two strategies as your optimistic strategy and your pessimistic strategy. You'll see why in a second. A GTC order is made by placing a buy order below the current market price and waiting to see if it gets filled. If the market moves in your favor, you may get a fill. If it moves away from you, you may not get a fill. I referred to this as an optimistic strategy because you're aiming for the reward of lower prices. However, in order to get this reward, you're taking on a big risk. If the market moves against you and you miss your fills, then you're going to have to buy at higher prices than if you hadn't waited. So again, don't use this for 100% of your hedging or you're opening up your business to price risk. Dilute your dependence on this strategy with the other two. The last pillar of systematic hedging is upside protection. This is your pessimistic hedge because it does the best when market conditions are the worst for the roaster, high purchase prices. For a roaster, I personally believe that the optimal upside protection is a ceiling accumulator. It offers upside protection, favorable acquisition levels, and steadily builds your hedge. There are other structures that you could use to protect the upside as well. You could buy a call, for example, or a bull fence, although these strategies both come with their own risk and reward profiles. You'll have to excuse me, I, I googled bull fence payoff matrix, and this is what I got, so I had to make my own. Let me emphasize, the rule of one-third is a baseline. You can and should customize these uh, ratios based on your view of the market. Think of your ratios as dials that you adjust according to your risk appetite and your view of the market. If you think prices will rise, you want to add more upside protection. If you believe prices will fall, then you're going to want to add more conditional hedges. If you don't have a strong opinion, you may want to increase your true hedge. To conclude, this framework can be done on your own. You don't need me to hedge in this way, and you can consider this a PSA of what I believe to be best hedging practices. However, I do work for a business that specializes in providing this hedging as a service. It's always a good idea to consult with a professional when developing or refining your hedging strategy. Working with a professional risk manager can uh, offer some distinct advantages. For example, at my day job, I've combined these three techniques into a single product called Improved Average Price. When you use this product, there's no out-of-pocket cost, and I believe that it is even easier and more accurate than hedging with futures. Professionals also have certain competitive advantages that can be more effective than trying to execute this hedging strategy on your own. Anyway, I'm not trying to sell you this. I'm just demonstrating that you can use systematic hedging to create an actionable hedging plan. If you're interested in hearing more about it, reach out to me and we can discuss. As a coffee boss, you need to focus on your core business of roasting coffee. 
Focusing on your core business is only possible if you're protecting your core business. Systematic hedging with futures or a product like improved average price is how you take your business seriously. Thanks for watching. Feel free to contact me with any questions and I'll leave you with this. Be a coffee boss. Be proactive. Hedge with a plan. When things are chaotic around you, be the boss who knows what to do. Here's my offer to you as a roaster. If you have any doubts about this, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me and I'll give you an hour of my time to discuss your hedging plan. Be well, hedge well, and I'm looking forward to speaking with you.